During the first quarter of 2024, the sellers that we worked with produced over $300 million in ad sales. And while my clients and I are killing it today, it was not always like that. I used to be terrible at PPC and I'd spend all day reading blog posts and watching webinars to try and get better. And most of that knowledge ended up being useless. And I had to hone my skills the hard way by working extremely long and grueling hours, which is why in this video, I'm going to try to spare you from all that. I'll give you my secret sauce and the seven tactics that I use to produce $300 million in ad sales so you can skip the learning curve and save yourself from burning your ad dollars. So let's dive right in. Okay, so our first strategy is to use the search query performance report to find the keywords where we're performing better than the rest of the market and allocate more budget to those keywords. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is go to brand analytics, then head into search analytics and select the search query performance report. Once you're there, go to ASIN view, add the product that you want to advertise, select your reporting range. I use monthly and I select the year that we're in and I look at the last month with available data, which for now is February. Then you just hit apply. And over here, you're going to get a list of the search terms that your product is showing up for, right? And you get a few interesting numbers. So you get to see impressions, clicks, add to carts, and purchases. So what I like to do here is I want to see the percentage of impressions that I'm getting compared to the percentage of clicks and then compared to the percentage of sales. So for this keyword, do mom gifts, it looks like I'm getting 1.25% of impressions, but I'm only getting 0.8% of clicks which means my click-through rate is below average because I'm getting 1.25% of all impressions, but I'm only getting 0.8% of all clicks, which means that proportionately, I'm getting less clicks per impression than others are. After that, I'm going to scroll over. I'm going to look at add to carts. I'm getting 1% of add to carts, which is above my share, which is good, and 1.4% of sales which is a lot higher than the percentage of clicks I'm getting. So I'm getting 0.8% of clicks, but 1.4% of sales. And this is on a high volume of sales. This is 24, so this is statistically significant. This means that I should be investing more into this keyword. The reason that my CTR is low here is probably because I'm not getting top of search, which means I'm not bidding enough or I'm not like investing enough or I'm not putting enough placement boost on this keyword to get into top of search, which limits my click through rate. This also is a high volume keyword, like this gets 20,000 clicks or 20.5 thousand clicks per month. And we're getting just 1% of that or even under 1%, we're getting 0.8%. And we're doing much better in terms of conversion rate than everyone else. So if we're a keyword like this, you want to invest more money, right? And you can look at some other examples here. So this is another relatively high volume keyword. We got 28,000 volume over here. If you look at the share of impressions, we're getting around 2.7%, which is better. Then if you go over and you look at our share of clicks, we're getting 3.36%. That's even better. That means we have an above average click through rate. Then if you look at cart ads, it's 4%. If you notice the percentage keeps going up, which is a really, really good sign. Then if you look at the percentage of purchases, it's gone up again and it's 4.75%. So we have a much better click through rate than everyone, a much better conversion rate and a much better uh, rate of going from clicks to add to carts. So this search query is very, very high performance for us. So this needs us to invest more money in it, right? And you can go down this list and I'd suggest only looking at things with decent volume. So you want to look at the total clicks that are happening over here. These are in the thousands per month, which means they're all worth looking at. But if you scroll down to the very bottom, you might find some search queries where there are only like a couple clicks happening. So those you don't really want to over optimize for one, because the data isn't statistically significant and two, because even if you got more clicks, it doesn't really move the needle for you. So find a few high volume keywords where your click through rate or your conversion rate or just your general performance is better than everyone else. Then add those onto an Excel sheet and go into targeting tab. Once you're in targeting tab, start searching these up. So over here we had new mom gifts. Right, let's search up new mom gifts and see what we're doing. New mom gifts. Right, and we can see how much we're spending on this keyword. So we're spending on average, let's do this 30 days. Actually, let's do February, that period that we just chose. Right, so we spent $300 at a 25% ACOS in February. Then we have this keyword in broad, right? Then we have similar keywords in broad as well. Then let's just add a filter for active status enabled. Right, so we have 13 different variations of this keyword. A lot of them aren't an exact match. 
And what I mean by exact match is like an exact copy of the keyword itself. So we have different variations, like uh, new mom gifts for women, new mom gifts for women after birth, baby girl. Like we have some other variations of this keyword. In terms of the keyword itself, we have it once in broad, which I can see over here. We have it again in freeze and again in exact. If you scroll over, we can see the bids on this are actually pretty low. So this bid is only 28 cents. In broad, we're bidding 1.15, which is good. The ACOS on that looks pretty good as well. Uh, in phrase, it looks like we're getting nothing. So I probably increase my bid in exact and on phrase in this keyword. One, so that we can rank higher. And two, so that we can get more clicks. Because our share of clicks right now is pretty low. And with this bid, I imagine we're not doing much in terms of, uh, in terms of top of search. So I'd probably go in, I'd increase the bids on these. I'd probably create more campaigns with these keywords. So I'd look at creating a sponsored brand campaign with these keywords. Then I'd also look at creating separate one keyword campaigns with only these keywords so I can apply a top of search placement boost to these that isn't going to apply to the other keywords in the campaign. So that's probably the action list. This will increase the amount of traffic I'm getting on this keyword. And since I'm performing better than everyone else, I should start selling more and I should still get a decent ACoS. For strategy number two, I'm going to show you how to bid effectively. There are multiple ways of doing this. One is automatic and the other is manual. I'm going to show you the manual first, then explain how you can actually automate all of this using our software. Okay, so for manual, I'm going to start by showing you the simplest method. I'm just going to go back into the targeting tab here. Then you're going to go and you're going to add two filters. One is the active status enabled filter for targets, and then the active status enabled filter for campaigns. After that, you're going to go in and add two more filters. One is a ROAS filter, the second is an ACOS filter. The reason I'm adding this is I'm trying to only find targets within a certain ACOS range. So over here, I'm going to say ROAS greater than three, which means anything at the 33% ACOS or lower. And then I'm going to add an ACOS filter. I'm going to say ACOS greater than 25%, right? So what I did here is I just cornered all of the targets that are between a 25% ACOS and a 33% ACOS. Right, so all of these are within a similar ACOS range, so we can add one bulk bit change to all of them. Right, so you just go and you select all, and you can add whatever range you want, of course. I just selected this one randomly for this example. And you're just going to do bulk actions. You're going to say adjust bid, and then you can say increase bid by percentage. You could do something like 10%. This all depends on your target. If I was targeting a 20% ACOS, I could decrease this all by 10, 15%. If I was targeting an ACOS higher than this, I could say increase bid by 20%, for example, right? So you can just select whatever you want to do at this point, and then you can go and change these filters. So you're looking at keywords above your target ACOS. So over here, less than 3x ROAS, this means 3x, sorry, 33% ACOS or higher, right? Then you can say ACOS less than 40. So now you have 33 to 40% ACOS and you have all of these keywords within this range. So you can go and you can assume that these are above your target ACOS, for example. Then you can just say bulk action, adjust bid, decrease bid on all by 10%. And you just hit save changes, right? So this is the manual way. In terms of automatic though, it's even easier. Like you just log in into AI Hello and you just go to the campaigns that you have. You can either select them one by one or just do bulk. And you can go in and add whatever settings you want. So first thing, you just switch on the software. You switch this on and hit save. Then you select whatever target ACOS you want. You can do this on a campaign level or an account level, portfolio level or product level. I just have it account level right now. So I'm just going to select 50%, for example, and hit save. And then you can select a few other settings. I'm going to skip over a few of these because they're pretty technical. But you can select the number of days that you want the software to consider for each bit change. You can select your goal, whether it's to increase sales or lower ad costs. You can select the level of aggressiveness you want. You can add your own maximum bid. You can automate placement boosts. You can automate negation. You can jolt new targets, jolt targets that used to spend, right? You can add new keywords automatically. You can harvest customer search terms. You can decide how many sales are required for a search term before it gets harvested. And you can day part too. So you can change bids intraday based on performance. So all of this is pretty easy to do. You just switch this on once and then every single day the software is going to go in, check how you're performing and make those changes for you. So over time, you're going to find new keywords in your account. You're going to find search terms that have been harvested. You're going to find bad search terms that have been negated. You're going to find placement boosts adjusted for you and base bids adjusted for you as well so that you can increase your sales and lower your ACoS. This works pretty well and over 5,000 setters use this.
Tactic number three is to use placement boost strategically to increase sales, increase spend, and potentially even lower ACOS. So over here, I've gone into the placement section within a campaign. So over here, right under Ad Group CF Placements, I've just selected this and opened it up. You can see the three different placements that you have here, top of search, rest of search, and product pages, and you can see that we have a 0% boost on any of them. If you scroll to the right though, you can actually look at the data and you can see how much we're spending and selling at each placement. So over here, even though top of search gets a very big chunk of the total clicks or any keyword, we're only spending what seems like 3% of our budget on top of search. And then if you look at the cost per click, it's even less than the cost per click for rest of search, which isn't right because top of search tends to be more expensive. Then if you look at the actual ACoS, the ACoS is 17.55%, whereas rest of search is 25.35%. So we're performing better on top of search. We're not really spending that much. It's only 3% of our budget, even though a very big amount of clicks happen on top of search, which means two things. Number one, we're leaving sales on the table. And number two, we could potentially even decrease our ACoS. So if we can get top of search to spend more at like a 22% ACoS, that will bring down the campaign level ACoS. So I can go in over here and I can look at the difference in ACoS. I could say it's around one third, right? You probably want to actually do the math on this. You could say it's around 25% to one third. Then you could go in and just add a 25% boost over here. And once you start spending more on top of search, you should see all of your numbers improve. Like you should see an improvement in sales and an improvement in spend and ACOTS. And you can go through every single one of your campaigns, at least the higher spending ones, and check the data for the last month or two and see how you're doing. The smaller the amount of data you have in a single month, the more you want to go back in terms of look back. So get at least a few thousand dollars in spend, look at the trends, look at how they're performing, and then add your placement boost in, and you should hopefully start seeing an improvement in sales. You can do this one by one for every single campaign, or you can automate it using the software as I showed you in our previous strategy. Either way works, one just works a lot faster than the other. Strategy number four is strategically creating new campaigns. And when I say strategically, I mean finding different areas where you're underinvested and putting more money into it so you can increase your ad spend and your sales. One example is finding keywords where you're not currently advertising. So what you can do is you can go out and you can do some keyword research. I have a separate video for this. And you can find keywords from Helium 10, from SQPR, from Google suggestions, from Amazon suggestions, from any other tool that you want to use. And then you can download a list of the targets that you use from the targeting tab, and you can compare the two on an ASIN level and see if you can find any new high volume, high relevancy keywords where you're not currently invested, right? And if you can, create new campaigns out of these keywords. Another example is creating campaigns out of targeting types that you're not really utilizing. So you can go in and you can see like your spend on auto, your spend on category, your spend on ASIN, and your spend on keywords. And then you can see which one you're underinvested in or which one you're not even running at all. And then you can create new campaigns out of that. So if you find out you're not spending any money at all on auto, you can create new auto campaigns and have those run, right? If you're not spending enough on keyword campaigns and all of your spend is going to auto and ASIN targeting, create new keyword campaigns or increase your bids on the existing keyword campaigns. So a few ways to go out this. Another thing you can do is look at the match types and figure out if you're underinvested in any match type. So if you're spending only 5% of your budget on broad match, that's usually not a good sign because broad is supposed to be the highest spending match type because it reaches so many different search terms. So you can go in and either increase your bids on broad, broad keywords, or you can go in and create new campaigns with broad keywords. So there are multiple ways you can go about this. And the idea is just to try and find things where you're underinvested, either on a targeting type level, an ad type level, even maybe you're not invested in sponsored brand or sponsored display, a match type level or a keyword level, and create new campaigns at that level to try to cover all bases and increase your ad spend. You can do this manually, or you can go into the software and do it automatically. So with the software, all you have to do is to go to the main campaigns page. You just hit create campaign. You can select Performance Max. Performance Max is our comprehensive campaign setup. It includes all match types and all targeting types. Just hit Performance Max. You select your product. We just run a quick analysis for you. And then you can scroll down and we'll find a target ACoS for you and a daily budget for your campaigns. And then you have a few options. You can either add your own new keywords or not. If you don't add those keywords in, our software will actually find new keywords that you're already not targeting automatically. And we'll distribute it across all three match types. If you want to see those keywords, you can just hit recommend keywords and see everything our software has to offer, right? So all of these I'm not currently targeting for this product. And the software will use these to create new campaigns for me automatically in all match types. 
right? And then we're going to set up an auto campaign. We're going to find ASIN targets and category targets for you automatically as well. So you can add your own ASIN targets or leave this empty. If you do leave it empty, we're going to create new campaigns with our own ASIN targets that we find for you. Then you can just go into advanced settings and you can add your own negative keywords. You could negate your brand name, for example. You can add your own placement boost, select your own bidding strategy. You can even launch this across several marketplaces in one go. After that, you just hit launch campaign. And within 30 minutes, you'll find eight new campaigns for that ASIN in your account ready to start spending and selling. This is pretty easy and pretty useful. And you can do it for more than one product at once. So if I add this in, I'll actually create eight separate campaigns. This doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to add these two into one campaign. What will happen is I'll create eight campaigns for this ASIN and another eight for this ASIN. And you can do this for 10, 20, 30 products at once and end up creating hundreds of campaigns without doing any of the keyword research or any of the campaign creation, which makes this the easiest and fastest way to scale up your ads. Tactic number five is harvesting keywords, which is the process of taking search terms from broad, phrase, and auto and moving them in as keywords in your manual campaigns. This again can be done automatically and can be done manually. I'm going to show you both ways. To do this manually, the first thing you're going to have to do is to create a search term report. So what you do is you go into measurement and reporting in campaign manager. Then you just select sponsored ads reports. Then you create a report for sponsored product search terms last 30 days. Just run this report. Right, I already have mine open over here. So you just go in and you start adding a few filters. The first thing I'm going to add is a filter to remove exact. So I'm just going to go over here and deselect exact. Then I'm going to go and I'm going to deselect anything where my orders are zero. Right? So it's any search term that has sold, that's not an exact match. So what you have here are all the customer searches that were used to reach your product that did actually lead to a sale. Right? I have blanked these out and I've just called them search term, but you're going to have the actual searches over here. And what you have to do next is to take them, go back into targeting tab on Amazon and make sure you're already not targeting them. Right? And if you're able to find search terms that you're not targeting already, you can go in and add them back into the relevant campaigns for the ASIN that this search term already came from. Right? And what you do eventually is you start adding dozens of keywords every single week and your targeting base grows and your targeting surface area grows. You start to spend more and you make more money. This is pretty useful. It's going to take you some time to do this at least once every couple of weeks or once every month, depending on the size of your account. But it's worth it and it's going to grow your ad spend and your ad sales. Right. Another option you have, of course, is to do this automatically. So you can just go into AI Hello over here and you can go into any auto campaign that you want to harvest from. Just click this small shield over here. Then you scroll down and you can just select the destination campaigns that you want. So you can just say anything that produces at least X amount of sales. So over here we have it as one. You can go up to 20 if you want. Gets moved in this match type to this ad group and that match type to that ad group and in this match type to that ad group. Right. And you can also do this for ASIN targets. You just select the number of sales required and then you can choose to negate it in source or not, which means negating it in the auto campaign after it's been harvested. This is super easy and you can just transfer hundreds of keywords automatically from all of your campaigns using this. You can also harvest from broad and phrase. So you can just open up a broad or a phrase campaign. Let me just select this one. This one's broad. Then you can go in. And you just scroll down a bit. And you go to top customer search terms. And this is essentially the number of search terms that you want to harvest per day. This is fixed at one sale per search term to qualify. Then you can just say I want to harvest anywhere from zero to 20 per day. Obviously, this depends on the availability of search terms too. And then you just hit save over here and we start harvesting those for you. So what ends up happening after like 30 minutes of setting this up for your campaigns, you start harvesting every single day from auto campaigns. As soon as a search term shows up, it converts, you harvest it. And then from your broad and phrase campaigns, you're also harvesting keywords and those add to your targeting base and you start to grow your account very fast. For tactic number six, we're going to be optimizing your budgets to allow your campaigns to spend as much as possible and sell as much as possible. So implementing this is actually pretty easy. All you're going to have to do is go into the budget step under campaign manager. And you're going to add two filters. One is an active status enabled filter and the other is an average time and budget less than 100 filter. What you're going to be left with is any campaign that's running out of budget within the time period that you selected. And then you can just look at their metrics. So over here, I'm just going to go in. I'm going to check ACOS. Two of these are within my ACOS target. The rest are not. So I'm just going to select the two that are within my target. I'm going to go in. I'm going to do a bulk action. Adjust budget. Then I'm going to increase my budget. 
by 40%. percent we just going to save changes here. And that's it. These campaigns will start spending to their full extent within the next few weeks. And that should bring in more sales and more ad spend at the same ACoS that they're currently getting since we didn't really change the bids or the cost per click. So this is a very useful strategy. It takes a couple minutes to do every month and can potentially increase all of your sales by a few percentage points. So it's definitely worth doing. Our seventh and final strategy is finding keywords where you're very close to ranking high organically, but not there just yet, and creating new campaigns to boost those keywords and increase their organic rank. Okay, so there are multiple steps to doing this. Step number one is to go back into brand analytics. You go back into that search query performance report to ASIN view, add your ASIN in, select the same reporting range, and hit apply. And then you're going to go back and you're going to pick out those same keywords where you, ha you have a higher click through rate and a higher conversion rate than everyone else. So just to remind you guys, you're looking for a higher ASIN share in terms of clicks than impression share. So over here, you have a ASIN share of 3.36% for clicks and a impression share of 2.73, right? Then you're also looking at having a higher ASIN share of purchases than clicks. So over here, we have 4.75% compared to 3.36% of clicks, right? So over here, we're converting at a higher rate and we're getting clicks at a higher rate than others are, which means that if we invest more money into this keyword, we could rank higher. You want to go through the whole list, at least the ones with decent search volume, and then you want to take these out. You want to put them on a separate Google sheet for later, and we're going to keep all of the keywords that you want to try ranking higher for organically. So I have a few example keywords over here. Then you're going to go into Helium 10 and you're going to drop your ASIN in. And then you're going to add a fill. Then you're going to add a few filters. Right? So I'm going to add a filter for organic rank. So you want anything between 10 and 30. Then we're going to add a minimum for search volume. So you only want keywords that are getting a decent number of searches. So we're going to go in. Right? And we're going to add a minimum search volume of 200. And then you want to exclude any branded keywords. So you can go in and exclude different search terms that contain your brand. So over here, I'm just going to write brand as an example. And you should be able to exclude those. Then you're just going to hit apply filter. And you're going to get all of the decently high search volume keywords where you're almost ranked top 10, but you're not quite there yet. And then you can take these, right? And you can export all of these. You can hit export data over here. And then you can open these up in a separate sheet and just go through these one by one to make sure that these are all relevant to your product. And for the ones that are relevant, you're going to go back into this Google Sheet and you're going to add them in. And then you're going to have your final list of keywords where you want to rank higher. Then I'm going to go into Campaign Manager and I'll take all of these keywords and I'll create exact match campaigns for these keywords. So one campaign, one keyword, that's it. Do it in exact match. And again, one ad group per campaign. So one campaign, one ad group, one keyword in exact match add a high bid to use at least the suggested bid and then add a 50% placement boost. And then what you want to do after is you're going to start to add your organic rank on each one of these keywords. So before setting anything up, you're going to add your rank on every one of these keywords. You can either check this manually or with Helium 10. So I'm just going to add example ranks over here. Right? Let's say 11, 15, 16, 18. Right? This is the first week. Then the week after that, you're going to go in and add an updated rank. And then over the course of four weeks, you hopefully want to see an improvement in your organic rank for these keywords. For the ones that aren't improving, you can scale back spend on them. And for the ones that are improving, you can add even more budget to try to break into top 10 or top 5. This is pretty simple. I use these campaigns for almost every account that I work on. And eventually over time, you start to rank higher for a lot of different keywords. And you can bring in organic sales that will grow your account and grow your total profit. Okay, that's it for this video. These are all seven strategies. I hope you found this useful. If you need help implementing this or you want to use our software, please reach out at www.aihello.com and either I or someone from my team will pick up this call and we'll be happy to guide you. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day. See you next week.